Hey guys, I'm Blisk here again. Uh, welcome to another installment um, to my day out class video, over, over, sorry, class overview video series I've got going on here. Um, today I'm actually not going to go over a class. Um, I'm going to go over champion levels um, and what those do, some cool things, some things you might want to go. Um, CLs are important on certain classes, maybe, um, things like that. Uh, let's go ahead and get in game real quick. I'm at the trainer here. I've picked up a few of these champion level respect stones. Um, if you don't know where you can find these, um, they're in the King's room, just at the quarter master, I think he's called. They're like 10 gold. They're essentially free. Um, I bought 10 of them so I can play with some specs. I also have my little minimalist over here so I can, uh, obviously, um, well, maybe not obviously, but as a naturalist myself, I can't train naturalist champion levels. Um, see, the naturalist trainer won't even talk to me. Unfortunate, but whatever. Um, but I can train anything else on a naturalist, and um, my minimalist is a magician, obviously, so he can train those. Um, or so he cannot train magician um, things, but he can train everything else too. Um, so we'll start by looking at the... Um, Let's, let's start by looking at the Guardian Trainer, and then we'll, we'll go counterclockwise, I suppose. Um, the Guardian Champion Level line, generally, they mostly give you, like, there's a lot of weapon styles early on. Um, things like Resilience can actually be pretty good. Um, you can't delve these, unfortunately, so I'm not going to be able to cover what all, they, what all they really do. But Resilience is an anytime style um, that has a small DD proc on it. This is actually a pretty good style to pick up on support or casters or something. Um, and you, I use these to melee down things like third pets or like trader's dagger pets or something. It just gives you, if you need to melee down pets um, or if you want to melee down a person um, as a support or caster, this is probably your best style just because that proc really gives you an extra boost of damage. As a caster, I think you can probably like two shot earth pets with this style with the big staff, maybe three shot um, with like a one handed, like on a bar, it's going to be a little slower, but it's a pretty good style. Um, I believe these styles is tenacity. I think, I don't know if that's a anytime style, um, but it's probably not really, from my understanding, it's not worth going from what I remember. I've never used it. Um, so I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't buy that. This is an after block style. I don't think it's a stun or anything cool like that. I just think it does damage. This seems to be an after parry style. Same, I just, I just think it does damage. Um, if you want a, another cool style to clear pets with, this foe splitter, I think it does a little more than resilience damage wise, but it is a frontal attack only. Um, but you can use that to melee down pets because pets are obviously going to be in your frontal arc if they're on you anyway. Um, but it is a little bit more expensive. You have to go level two of it. Um, so you might not do that. Um, ignoring the rest of the styles, because I just don't think that they're that good. We'll go into some of the um, some of the tank or the, the guardian spells that you get. And keep in mind, before we get too far into this, Hibernia's things. Okay, so for example, um, disease on mid is going to be in the naturalist line. Whereas disease on Hib is, I think, in the magician line, or the forester line. One of the two. I think it's a magician, but on Alb, it's also in like the elementalist or the one of the the mage lines. Alb has two mage lines, but disease is going to be in one of those. Whereas, like I said, on Mid, it's going to be in the acolyte line. That's because shamans get disease mainly on Mid, whereas cabs get it on Alb and elds get it on Hib. So they're kind of in their respective place on each realm. So they're gonna be a little different on each realm. So like, I, I can't get disease on my healer, but I can get disease on my bard and my druid and my, my cleric and friar, things like that. Um, just some things that are different in the realms. Anyway, let's get back into it. Um, this little ability right here is actually pretty cool. Um, it's called Suppress Wounds, sorry. And what it does is it gives you a 200, um, a 200 value ablative that absorbs 100% of the damage. It's a five second reuse, it's an instant use, minute duration. I just use this if I have it whenever I'm about to take a little bit of damage. It's just gonna give me a free, essentially gives you free 200 health. Um, just absorbs 200 damage right off the bat. So that's a pretty good ability if you have it. Um, these spells we're about to get into are CC reduction spells. Now what this does is a 20 minute buff so it's just like one of your timers that you keep up all the time. 
um, cast ball on the move and whatnot, I believe. Um, it's a 10% value um, reduction to root and snares. So where this can be valuable is I used I used to have this on Bard and I might have it on like healer and things like that. I get it on support sometimes just because I like the fact that it, gives, it, it lowers roots by 10% pretty much. So if I'm in a group that's pushing really hard and the group that we're fighting is pulling hard and I'm on say a warden or a druid or a bard even and I get rooted and then the bad guy group keeps pulling and my group keeps pushing then I'm kind of out of the fight for however long that route lasts. This just saves me some time. So if I get reared for, you know, 60 seconds, this say this shaves off six seconds of that route. Nothing super major, but it is nice. Um, it is something to consider. Um, but there are some other options, especially on things like Bard or supports or things like that. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. That's a, that's a pretty good spell. And now this does the exact same thing, except for it's for um, Mez. I would not get this on things like Bard um, because I have my own Mez Reduction spell. It's a 40% Mez Reduction that lasts for self buff 20 minutes. So this becomes redundant, the CL buff. I would use my spec one, obviously. Um, on things like Sorcerer, where you have your own chant, if you're, if you're mind spec, you have your own little Mez Reduction chant. It's obviously not going to help. So maybe don't go for this one. But if you do want the root immunity or the root reduction, you can go for like the level four. But you don't have to put your points into the mass reduction too. You can go, you can spread your points out somewhere else. Um, going here, this is just a self damage ad. Nothing major, probably not really worth. I mean, if you have it, you may as well put it up if you're mailing, um, but not a big deal. This is an interesting buff. It's a parry buff. It's a five minute reuse, one minute duration, 11% chance to parry. Um, don't think I can use it with a harp out if I'm on bard, but if I'm on my druid or shaman or whatever, I can throw this up and I have a small chance to parry. Um, just gives me a little more defense, not bad. Uh, the next spell, actually we'll go ahead and go to the last spell in this line, it's a it's a better version of that. Instead of being 11% chance to parry, it's a 17% chance to parry. However, this little damage ward, this middle spell, I think this is one of the better CLs in the game. So what this does is if you think to casters, um, their base shields, uh, one of them is their absorb shield, their ABS shield. It gives you 10 ABS. This gives you five. And you can use this, I can use this on I can, my, my healers, my shamans. I can use this on chain wearing classes and it's gonna give me that five ABS, which is really strong when you consider that the casters get one that's pretty important for them because if they don't have that up, they get hit for a ton. And there's this 10, this is half that and you get I have a CL that's up all the time. It's a 20 minute buff, you know, it's not like it's only, only lasts for a minute in a fight. So I. I probably, I would probably get this on, honestly, like any class, even my casters, like, like my Sork, my Thurgs, because um, it does stack, by the way, with your shields. Like it will stack with your caster ABS buff. So that's pretty strong, um, really strong actually. So get that on, I, I get this on everything pretty much that I can. Obviously I can't get it on my tanks, but even things like minstrels, minstrels are considered uh, stalkers or rogues or whatever they are are on, are on alb so i get this one on those um really strong i use it on my pain rookie necro it gives me some more some more absorb i like it um moving on we have just a little spec af buff i think this is considered spec af not base af but if you don't have a bot or a supremacy pot use this i guess it's not really worth it in my opinion i would definitely want my armor factor from elsewhere because it's such an easy buff to obtain through either realm buffs you can you can get your spec you have through a realm buff bot um the uh for value points or gold definitely worth doing that over that uh this is an interesting thing it gives you uh essentially a blue invigoration pot but up all this up for 20 minutes so if you really don't like using invigs you can buy this i guess i wouldn't um just because i think there's a lot of points to invest for endurance when you can use a pot that costs you know, 30 gold and gives you 20 charges. But if you go to this line, you have that. Um, now this is interesting, it gives you an accuracy boost. Um, if you find yourself missing a lot and you really wanna rectify that, 7% accuracy boost, 20 minute duration, it's essentially a permanent buff. Um, not sure I'd really get this on anything. Uh, the only thing this would be useful on is things remaining a lot, which are tanks, which can't buy this. So I don't think I would, I would necessarily look at buying that. Um, next, we'll look at the Forester line. 
Um, this is going to have things like your your DDs, um, things like that, some some stat debuffs. But we'll go through them. You get a a castable base dex debuff. It's a minute duration, so it's a really long duration, and it's a two second cast time. Now the difference between CL cast times and cast times like my Mez or Root, for example, is um, that these are not affected by dex. So this is going to be a hard two second cast time. It's not going to be affected by dex debuffs or anything, but I'm not going to get the benefit from dex. Um, whereas my Mez and Root or other spells are affected by dex. So this is a hard two second cast. Um, going through this line, we have a dex quick debuff that's castable. only lasts 30 seconds, so it's not quite as potent as the other one. However, it is AoE, so 250. Um, these are cool. Um, these might be used on things like, like in, in the solo game, Scalds or Minstrels, where you might, as a Scald, instant mez out a target, and then you can start using spells like these, debuff them, ca use your casted debuffs. You're not going to get these off in fights a lot, I don't think, but if someone's mez and you're 1v1ing them, you can cast these debuffs on them, and it's not going to break their mez because they're stat debuffs. Stat debuffs don't break mez. So... Maybe uh maybe look to use that on minstrel or skull things that you are one v oneing on that you can use mezes on like long duration mezes, relatively long duration mez skull mez is pretty short. Uh, as we go, th we'll look at the other line here. It's just a base strength uh, debuff for a minute, um, and then a strength con debuff. And keep in mind they're not terribly high values. They're forty five and thirty on the base, not super huge. And this strength con debuffs can be AOE and last thirty seconds too. Everything was a two second cast time. Moving on, there's a hasty buff. Now this is actually kind of strong. It's a 25% hasty buff, um, which is a, a fair value in my opinion. Um, it, it's, it's normal red haste is 20%. It completely takes away their their haste buff. Um, however, it is a 30 second duration and it is like all the other ones, a two second hard cast. Um, and then you get a, a base con debuff. Um, 30 second duration, single target, two second cast time. Um, but just a good way to take away some help. Like I said, this might be useful on minstrel scalds, things like that. Uh, things that can mess, like I said. And then as we go on, we get a life tap. Life tap is a strong word because it only has 20% return of however much you deal. Um, it is 115 delve, which is okay. I mean, you're not going to be nuking for 500 or anything with this, but you know, you'll you'll do a couple, like maybe 115 or 150 or so damage, depending on if you have you know, TOAs or stuff like that, or how much resist they have. You'll do you'll do a fair amount of damage with this, but it's not going to heal you for a lot since there is a, only a twenty percent return um, from damage dealt. So don't expect to heal yourself much from this. Two second cast time, fifteen hundred range. Uh, moving on to these these lines, um, we'll start with this one. This is going to be whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to buy it. Whatever. This is going to be a just a DD, 100 delve DD, um, 1500 range, 2.0 second cast time, pretty standard stuff. Uh, next, we get a uh, speed decrease, like a, a DD plus a snare nuke, essentially. Um, cast time is a little slower, 2.5 second cast time, not affected by dex. Um, 30 second duration on the speed decrease, though. And it's a 35 second snare, so that's pretty good. 85 damage, damage isn't crazy, 1500 range, so that's cool. Um, moving moving on, we have a PBOE, does 150 damage, two and a half second cast time, probably wouldn't buy this. PBOEs are affected by fall off, you're going to have to be riding on someone to do any significant damage over like the AOE nuke. The cast time's slow too, it's 0.5 versus, or sorry, 2.5 versus 2.0, 300 radius. I guess, okay, if you want to pop stealthers, but they're going to probably move out of the way by the time this finishes casting. Um, next, we have a AOE snare nuke. Now things like this are really good. These AOE new CL, AOE nuke CL um, deals, CL spells are really nice. I usually have some sort of AOE damage ability on my bard, whether it be this or an AOE dot. Um, even on like things like healer, um, cleric, friar, warden, things like that. And the the reason I like to have these is because if I get zopeted in the middle of a fight. And they're not at me yet. They're they're running toward me slowly. Like if I see the guy just cast them and I'm probably, you know, 700, 1,000 units away from him, if I'm free, I will AOE nuke down those Zopets. And it takes me two and a half seconds to cast, but it'll kill those Zopets pretty much. I think, I know the AOE dot one one-shots them. I don't know if this one-shots, but. So it's a great way 
to, to clear Zopets off yourself if you get them before they get to you and you're not interrupted, or to help a teammate. You can Zopet clear off a teammate. Um, so that's nice because Zopets have pretty low health pools. Looking at this one, it's just a, it's another PBOE. It's higher delve. The radius is actually smaller than the last one, even though it's the last. You're having to spend like pretty much all your champion points into this. So I wouldn't get this, but you can if you really want to. Uh, moving on, we have another um, 100 delve DD. It's going to be a different damage type. This last one was matter. This is going to be body. Um, then we have a, uh, a DD plus body debuff, if you want that, whatever. Um, uh, we have another life tap, 85 damage, 20 health return, two and a half or 2.2 second cast time, whatever. I don't think that's necessarily that great. I don't value these life taps because the health return is so low on these that I wouldn't really buy these on anything. Uh, moving on, we have a higher delve um, DD with the same 10% body debuff, 2.5 second cast time, except for this one's AOE. So this one could be useful, like I said, for clearing pets. Uh, this one actually does a lot, not a lot, it does 15% more damage essentially than this snare nuke one, uh, but it doesn't have that snare. You can actually use the snare nuke too to help peel a little bit. It is a 30 second snare, so if you get crazy and want to like cast that on a, I don't know, if you're a, if you're a fryer and some champs hitting your back line you want to snare nuke them then go for it it'll snare them for 30 for 30 seconds and it'll be a 35 second snare or 35 percent snare sorry so decent uh this is a higher dull aoe nuke good for clearing zopets and this is going to be just a 130 dull dd 2.0 2 second cast time it's pretty expensive usually these these last little spells in the lines are pretty dang expensive like we can go and see how much it costs to buy a full line it's going to leave you with one point. It's going to spend pretty much all of your champion level. So um, you're going to have to really want to commit to that line and to get that spell. Um, I probably wouldn't. There's other lower level CLs that are really good. Um, so that does it for the Forester. Uh, let's let's run over to the Magician. Um, see what he's got to offer. I'm going to go ahead and use another uh, stone just because I can free up my CLs. All right. Here we got... Um, We'll start over here. Um, got another DD, 100 delve, just cold damage. This is going to be an uh, AOE nuke, 100 delve AOE nuke, 2.0 seconds. So this is probably going to be the fastest cast AOE nuke. Let me, I think the body, yeah, the body debuff, they did 100 damage and I had the timber body debuff AOE nuke was 2.5 seconds and it cost, it was a fourth tier CL item. If you want something just to clear Zopets, I think this might be it. I think this will one shot, not 100% sure, but I think it will. And it's a 2.0 second cast time and it's super cheap. It's only a tier two. So if you want to go a line just to get those Zopat clears, this would be the, the line in my opinion. Um, things don't like on Bard, um, Healer, whatever. Things that don't have any sort of AOE offensive spell. Um, this is just gonna be a bolt. It's not even bolt range. It's, 1650 range um, two and a half second cast time 30 second recast you know only 125 delve I, I probably wouldn't wouldn't go for this um, this is a aoe nuke with a 100 damage with the cold debuff similar to the body one actually hold on i'm i'm curious that it's i just wanted to see if this one has an aoe nuke that i missed no it didn't okay sorry back to that sorry to get sidetracked um but yeah we it's an aoe 100 damage cold nuke 2.5 second cast time with a 10 percent cold debuff nothing crazy and this is just a better bolt um if i can oh yeah, i'm flagging out give me one second guys to get back to be able to well there we go let's see this is just a better bolt 155 still it's actually 1750 range so it's getting closer to actual bolt range so if you really want a long distance rupt you can go this line. The early level bolt, 1650. This level bolt is 1750, but it's a lot of points to spend. Not worth it, in my opinion. And I am i don't know if these bolts share a cooldown. In my opinion, it doesn't matter because this line's kind of useless past level two. So I probably wouldn't do it. Uh, we'll probably see some similar stuff. 100 damage, single target nuke, 2.0 second cast time, different damage type. Then we have a snare nuke, 2.5 second cast time, single target. 30 second snare, good deal. Seen that before. Another P bay. CL P bays aren't very good. Um, then we have an AOE snare nuke, another one. Um, 
This is similar to the other one, except for it's energy damage, 85 damage, 35% snare nuke, 350 radius. Good for Zopets. Like I said, you can even try to peel someone with it. Uh, moving on, 100 damage heat nuke. And then we have another um, AoE nuke. And this is 2.0 second cast time, 100 damage, 350 radius. This is good for clearing Zopets also. Um, so you can choose between this one and this one if you want a spell similar to that, just different damage types. And with this, we also get a um, heal over time. So this is this is interesting. I like, I really like this spell right here. Um, and the reason I like it is like in, in a solo, I like it when I'm soloing um, because if, for example, um, I'm on Minstrel or Scald, or if I just get some space, or if I, right after a fight I need to get some extra health really quick um, before maybe something comes and kills me after after the fight, I can cast this and it's gonna it's gonna heal me pretty pretty quickly. It's not gonna like heal me to full, but it's a nice little health spike. And if you cast this right before you re-engage on Scald or Minstrel, like say you mess someone and then you have a chance to cast your, so you have some CL debuffs, and then you can cast this, and then start the fight. This will be ticking while the fight's going. So even if you're at 100% on Scald or Minstrel after you restart the fight, if this is ticking as soon as you uh, break the Mez to start fighting again, you'll have this um, for 15 seconds during the fight. So that's a pretty cool ability, I like that. I think there might be one in on the Naturalist as well, but we'll get to that later. Uh, then we got another AoE Nuke. This is the 100 damage AoE nuke with the heat debuff, um, similar to the other ones. And then this one's just a better hot. It's a 75 value versus 50 value, I think. Yeah, 50 value versus 75. Um, same frequency, same cast time, same duration. It's a lot of points to invest in it. I probably wouldn't go for it, but you can if you really want a higher level. Now this is, this is probably my favorite line on Bard. So what I like to do is I like to um, get this dot. It's a single target dot, um, just 75 damage per tick, 20 second dot. Um, it's just, so as you can tell, I'm battle, battle enforcer on my bard. Uh, I did a lot of duoing on this, so I was able to get a lot of death blows. And actually, a lot of the times, um, if I was playing bard mauler or bard, um, if I was playing bard mauler, I'd get bodyguard a lot or we just get so much space to where I'd just be co totally free at the end of a fight we'd have a lot of CC and then the Mauler would just kill stuff the bard would just be sitting there CL dotting putting out extra damage um, and then using my DDs to steal death blows obviously but um, there were there were times where I did a, a decent amount of damage as bard um, through seals so it was mainly through dots if I remember correctly I think this AOE dot or this single target dot and this AOE dot stack or it might be another single target dot. I can check in a second because I'm, I'm curious again. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll buy this. I'll buy this line real quick. And then this is just a damage add. Doesn't matter. Um, whatever. And then you got your disease. It's a, a, a thousand range. Um, 2.2 second cast time. 30 second disease. Pretty strong. It used to be 1500 range. Even stronger. It used to be 2 second cast time. But they nerfed it a little bit. But this is a super strong ability. Um Super good on tanks, super good on support that can buy it. Loved it on Bard, especially in my duo. Um, I get it. I mean, tanks should get it all the time. Um, casters mostly can't, but you probably won't get it on casters if you have a lot of other stuff to cast. But I, I really like it on CC classes, like Bard and Cleric. Well, not Cleric's not a CC class, but support classes. Bard, Druid, Cleric, Warden, Friar, whatever. I love the Seal Disease. And then, like I said, I really like this for clearing Zopets. Like I said earlier, I don't know if there's 100 damage AOE DDs one-shot Zopets, but I know this will... It may not kill him on the first tick, but it's going to kill him on the second tick, probably. And this is a um, 1,500 oh, radius um, AOE dot. It's a two-second cast time, so it's the same as the best AOE clear. This is also two seconds. It's 109... Or, sorry, it's not 195. It's 95 delve. Uh, like I said, two-second cast time, 350 radius, so we will kill Zopets. Love it. Always got it on my Bard, and this is something I would also do a little damage with if I was trying to be cheeky on Bard. Um, and then you can go for this AoE Seal Disease. Um, it's 1,000 range, 2.2 second cast time, same as the single target, but it has a 250 radius. I probably wouldn't pick it up, 
but you can if you want to. Um, it's a lot of points to invest in it. You can probably get something else. All you get is a 250 radius. Sometimes you don't even want that radius because you might break a mess by doing it. Or sometimes you might get lucky and interrupt two people at the same time or apply two diseases. So it's up to you. Uh, looking at the stalker next, stalker trainer. You get a bunch of weapon styles. I'm not going to lie. I don't know a lot about these styles, so I'm not really going to go into them. I don't think they're that great. I think as far as weapon styles, um, the uh, the guardian ones, the resilience or the foe splitter, if I'm not mistaken, are the ones to get. The spine crack might be okay, but I don't think... I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, other things in this line that might be of use, um, this little safe fall buff it's only a 15 percent safe fall buff but it lasts 20 minutes uh, i wouldn't buy it i'd use a safe fall myth or something like that but if you really want some safe fall there is your cl it's only level two um the other ability in this line is a uh, two second body dd 1500 range nothing special um level ones are better over here you get 100 damage at level one versus 70 this is a 11% body resist. It's only, I mean, if you're going, if you can, if you're going this much into a spec for a, uh, a spell or is a spell, just there's a naturalist CL buff that gives you 10% to all magic resist. And I think it's at the same level. Just get that. This is not worth it. Um, I don't know what this style does, but I can tell you it's probably not worth it because it's level four in this pretty crappy line so and this is a 17 percent body buff that's a lot of points for a little bit more percent um if you're running solo and you really 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 want some body resist you can you can buy this i guess but i think there are better ways to spend your seals um than that um you get an evasion 11 percent chance to evade uh one minute duration five minute reuse similar to the parry buff um the higher level one 17 percent same duration, same recast. Then you get another style. It looks like it's off evade, so probably not worth it. These posi or these reactive or positional um, CL styles don't really do it for me. Uh, looking here, we get a uh, another 200, 100%, 200 value, 100% absorb, similar to the one in the tank line. This is a good spell. Um, one minute duration, five minute reuses, like I said, just gives you essentially 200 more hit points. This is similar to the tank line, gives you five or N3, which is uh, improved drought and invigoration, free in pot. Um, not really worth it unless you want to go for the celerity. Um, so this celerity gives you 7% celerity and it lasts for 20 minutes. So it's a, uh, essentially a permanent buff and it gives you obviously 7% celerity, which is not bad. It's very expensive to go for. Uh, you can buy celerity pots. They're kind of expensive, but they give you 15% celerity. Or you can use um, celerity charges. Um, if you're an alchemist, you can recharge those at 886 alchemy. Um, doesn't take long to get there. Um, but yeah, this isn't this isn't too bad. It's expensive, but I could see why people would buy this. It's free celerity without having to spend a bunch of money on it or rely on a weapon proc or get a bunch of alchemy or rely on other people to recharge your stuff. So I could see people going this line. Uh, would I? Probably not, because I think alchemy is really easy to level, and it's, yeah, I'd just buy that and get other seals, but yeah, it's pretty decent. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and, and move on from there. I need to go to my minimalist over here, because he can look at the naturalist list. And this is a really popular seal line, mainly because this little line right here, but I'm going to start over here um, in order. This is a single target heal, 100 value, 2.2 second cast time, 2,000 range. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a decent heal, um, but it's single target. Um, not bad. Then you get a cure dot and a cure disease. You can buy either of those. Um, 4.2 second cast time, man. That's pretty long. That's a hard cast, remember. Not affected by dex. So you're literally sat there for 4.2 seconds. And those are real seconds, not like dex seconds. So. And then you get this heal. It's a 2.8 cast time. So it's quite, it's 0.6 seconds uh, slower than the lower one, but it is a um, 200 value heal. So it's double the uh, the lower one. Pretty strong. It's pretty expensive, but pretty good. And then you get a cure nearsight. Now this could be really good because 
if you're small manning a lot and say you don't have a bard or healer to be fair now pretty much every support can get cure in your sight at a pretty reasonable spec of rejuve whereas in the past like if you were running bard net the bard didn't have cure in your sight if you got near side you were screwed now the bard has it it's a slow cast time but it's way better than this it's the bar uh, cure near sight six seconds, but affected by decks. This is a hard six second cast time. That's slow. Six seconds of your life casting that. Um, so probably wouldn't get this, but if you're running a uh, a little small man or something that doesn't have a cure, I guess that's your only option. Uh, going on to the next one, you get this little group heal. Um, 75 health, 2.6 second cast time for your group. A lot of people get this, mainly because they're going for seal resist, but it's a nice way to uh, sustain after a fight. Uh, this is the big one. This is what a lot of people will buy because it's good. It's a really good spell. It's cheap. It's level two, and it gives you 10% resist. So if you're soloing, you're probably going to get this just because you need the resist. Um, you can buy resist buffs from the realm buffer guy, the little realm enhancement fella. Uh, those are 8%, I think. So you're getting a lot, lot of value out of, um, you're getting a little bit more value out of this and you don't have to worry about the realm buffer fella. So yeah, a lot of people buy this definitely not a bad, not a bad investment here. Um, oops, looking at the next one, this is a, an interesting ability. It used to be really good, but now, um, melee resist charges have become way more common. This essentially gives you 5% to um, all your melee resist for a minute, five minute reuse, instant cast. Uh, most people have melee resist charges in their template that last for 10 minutes and they're 10% instead of 5%. Um, however, if you're in a fight and your melee resist charge isn't up, you can throw this up and it gives you something. Um, so it's an option. This is a heal over time. This is, I think this is the one I normally had when I was soloing. Um, this is, so this is 65 Delve, whereas if you remember the Magician one started at 50, and then the highest level one, which is the last spell in the line, was um, 75. So this kind of sits in the middle. Um, same duration, 15 second duration, same cast time as the other one, um, three seconds, frequency's the same. So it's just a good way to, uh, to med up after a fight quickly. Or if you're a Minstrel or a Scald or something, to mez and then cast this heal up while they're mezzed. You can even start using this group heal to heal up after the mezz too, um, while they're just sitting there. And then recast this right before you re-engage and you'll have this for 15 seconds um, while you're meleeing them or brawling with them. And then this is just going to be a spread heal. It's a higher value um, group heal. However, it's a 4.5 second cast time. That's slow. So not affected by dex, I don't believe. So don't know if I'd buy that or go all the way up to that. Um, this line right here is interesting. Um, these are, these are buffs. These are concentration buffs. You can use these on your friends. You can use these on pets. You can use these on yourself. These are actually pretty good. Uh, the main reason why is in like people that are really, really trying hard to, to be good and win stuff. will use these, I guess. Um, a lot of the AV8 people will use these or they used to use them because you can't get sheared. Concentration buffs or any buffs that you cast on yourself, whether it be like a champ um, dex quick or strength con buff that lasts for 20 minutes or like a bard self dex uh, base dex buff or self um, base con. Any buffs you cast on yourself like that cannot be shared. These are no exception. So you can cast these on yourself. And so let's just look at one real quick. So you have this, this base strength one and it gives you 40. It's affected by buff bonus though. So it will be higher than that. And then you have this um, strength con buff right here, which is 65. Like I said, it's also dex quick, but affected by buff bonus. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken with cat buff bonus, you're looking at like in the 140s, in the 140 range for, um, actually I have, a, I have a character with these. Let me, let me pull them up real quick. Um, but yeah, you're looking at pretty high Pretty high buffs, not cap by any means, but high. Let's see, we're, we're on my BM. Um, let's cancel these. Um, let me figure out what my buff bonus. This buff bonus this has 15% buff bonus, and this myth has 10%. All right, 
Where's my, okay. So what we're gonna do is cast these seal buffs on my cell and we'll see how much buffs it gives me. This is with 25 buff bonus, so. All right. So it gives me 138 strength and the cap is 155. So that's not terrible. Um, what a lot of people do is they use these base buffs and then they'll use a like a uh, dex quicker strength con charge and then it gives you a, quite a bit. Also the quickness, the quickness cap for buffs is that you get from dex quick is 93. This gives you 86. It's really not that bad for quick, like if you're looking for quick on a tank. So unshareable um, quick buff for, it's only um, what, like, was it what did I say it was 93 so that's what like seven points off or so it's not that's not bad really um, now what a lot of people do is they'll cancel the strength con I keep my decks quick but just cancel the strength con and I throw on this ring throw out my strength con charge and keep in mind this strength con charge is unshareable as well so now I have 145 strength, 145 con. I'm only 10 con off and I have unshareable buffs. Yeah, I have to keep up one charge, but that's not really that bad. And then I have, I'm only, what, seven quickness off uh, my cap or the, what red decks quick would give me. So I don't know, it's not a bad shout to, uh, to use these. So let's look at these again. So yeah, a lot of people I would go, if I were on a tank, for example, I would buy this space strength, this haste, this con buff, and then this, if you want to, you can either use a dex quick charge or you can go for this for the dex quick portion of it. Um, keeping up strength con and dex quick charge is kind of annoying, but only have to keep up, only have to keep up uh, your strength con charge is kind of nice and you only lose seven quickness. So I'd buy that if I was on tank. And then I'd, I'd take the rest and I'd go buy CL disease probably. Um, and then if you want to go higher into this line, you can get a res. Um, it can't not be cast by stealth classes apparently, but anything else can cast it. <laughs> That's kind of rude. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's a, it's just a res. I don't know the specs on it, the cast time, the range or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty slow. But it is a res um, that you can get on non-naturalist classes. And the other side is a, a base dex buff and a, an acuity buff. I wouldn't use a security buff because it's just going to be so low compared to what you can get out of a, a charge or something uh, like on a caster. But this, this is mainly for tanks that are getting in there, getting sheared a lot, and that don't really doesn't really matter if they're down like 10, 10 strength or 10 con. Um, casters need their break points, so you don't really want to use this with decks um, unless you want to put a lot more points into AUG decks. But anyway, that's been CLs. Um, yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to test actually if this dot I bought, these dots on my bot, ugh, these dots that I bought on my bard stack. I believe they do. All right, let's go to my bard account. That's not it. Is that, there we go. Okay. So let's see, let's put these somewhere. Um, these right here. This is the single target dot, and this should be the AOE dot. All right. So sick fog, 81 damage, sick cloud, 101 or 106. And then my, the 62 is the first dot. So they're both ticking. So yeah, these dots do stack and you can see on my minimalist, you can see them both up here. Um, so yeah, if you wanna put out some damage, use that. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's honestly my, my bards, um, spec would be this, I, I would buy up to there and then I might look at seeing if I can get, can I get this ABS buff? I don't know. Probably not. It's pretty high up there. I don't think I can get two level fours, but we'll try. We have some respec stones. Yeah. We're not gonna be able to get it. You see, that would be my ideal spec. Um, but I can't do it. So that's fine. What I'll probably do is sell this or respec again definitely get this resilience I'm gonna buy that go here get my dots and disease just because i like my dots and stuff 
I could I could I could either get this disease or sorry this dot and then get the five ABS. Sorry, I could forego getting this A we dot and get the five ABS, or I could not get the ABS and get this A we dot. Depends on what you want. And I think you might can still somehow manage a way to get a low level A we clear. But I like my dots, so I'm I'm sticking to them. And after that, I don't know what I would buy. Um, I doubt I would buy one of these, but I, I might look at one of these tank lines and maybe see if I can, I can afford this. So I might go, I might go this just to get this 200 um, little instant ablative. Actually, I can't buy that, huh? Okay, what I would have to do is not buy resilience and use my pet clear style as first player. A little bit of trial and error. So what I would do, buy this, buy Foe Splitter, and buy Suppress Wounds, and then run over here, and buy my Dot and Disease Line. Is this the optimal spec for Bards? Probably not. I just like my Dots. Um, if I'm duoing, I just, yeah, I mean, I like putting out some damage like that. Uh, it's worked well for me in the past. I've, I've We've been pretty successful duo, um, and that's a good source of damage for extra damage. But um, if I were being serious about it, I might see if I can, I'll do another spec to see what my serious spec would be, just to see if it works. So you got to get disease. Disease is important in my opinion. I mean, I guess you don't have to. I just really like it. Um, I want to see if I can get this ABS buff because I think it's really strong. So let's see what we can do to get it. It's over here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do what I want because at that point, I'm not going to have an AoE nuke. And I think AoE nukes are pretty important for Zoclear. Um, so I guess at that point, you got to make a trade. You got to say, I want either the five abs buff or i want an aoe nuke or i want disease and you choose i'm just going to go back and get my dots just because like i said that's me um i like being able to clear those and i like being able to do extra damage to dots and small man mainly duo but so i'm going to do that so do what you want um so many options there's a ton of options i don't think there's any particularly right way a lot of bards want to go and get this um, this root reduction, which is fair. It's a good point too. Uh, I'm not one of those, so I'm not gonna get that. So you, you could you could drop the AOE dot and get the the root reduction and not have an AOE nuke. It's up to you. Anyway, that about wraps it up for seals. There's so many different styles. Like I said, mid, al, pip are all different about who you can buy what from. So you might not be able to get certain things in certain classes based on the realm. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to be it for CLs. Um, have any tips or cool combinations, things you like to use, let me know. Um, any suggestions or anything? I think I pretty much covered most things except for the melee styles. Um, that would have taken forever just buying everything and selling everything. So not too worried about covering those. You can do some trial and error if you want. But like I said, I don't think there's really anything important in there. But yeah, let me know um, if there's anything you'd like me to do in the past. This was a suggestion from someone. Someone suggested that CLs would be a cool, uh, a cool video to, to do. So I did it anyway. Um, thanks for watching again. That's been my overview of uh, champion levels. Hope you enjoyed.